going to treat your family out somewhere. Or every week you guys come and have dinner at my house every Saturday. My wife's going to cook, for example, and you come and eat at my house. How many of us do those things? We have to start thinking outside of the box. We are so happy to invite our friends that we know they can afford food anyways. Invite people that we know all the time, we sit there, we chill with them. How many times do we invite people that can't afford things and we feel content giving to them? Alhamdulillah, I fed someone that I know they can't afford this. Even if it's buying a homeless person a cup of coffee at Tim Hortons. Take them inside. Because you know if they walk in Tim Hortons a lot of the time, the employees, not Tim Hortons, I shouldn't say only Tim Hortons, any restaurant usually. You know when a homeless person walks in and their clothes are all ripped to pieces and they might not smell nice and their hair is long and they're dirty, their fingernails are dirty. A lot of restaurant or store owners will just say, you know what, just stay outside. Just stay outside. Don't come in. Even though they might have the money to buy something. Bring them inside. Tell the employee, no, no, he or she is with me. They're with me. Take them in, buy whatever they need, sit down with them, have the meal with them, talk to them, at least find out what their name is. At least find out what their name is. Have that nice cup of coffee with them, give them a nice donut or bagel or a sandwich, whatever it is, buy them something that's good and healthy for them, something that warms them up, makes them feel good and happy, get to know them, Tell them a little message of Islam. Plant the seed of Islam with them. And make dua for them in front of them. In front of them. Say, you know what? I ask my Lord, I ask Allah, I ask God to make everything easy for you. And I will truly remember you. Sincerely, I will remember you in my prayers. And we should be doing this with our children. Believe me, believe me, believe me. If we do this with our children, subhanAllah, our children will love us when they grow up. They will experience things that they will be able to tell people, my mom and my dad did this with me. They took me to places, they helped me to help others. They taught me to feed others. We need to do this with our youth. SubhanAllah, I think one of these Fridays we're going to cancel our haramah and do this. We're going to go downtown and we're going to do this, inshallah. The next chapter we'll go through these hadith very quickly, inshaAllah. Abdullah ibn Khulayd al Juhani reported from his paternal uncle, Urbaid, uh, Urbaid ibn Abdul, uh, ibn Abdul Halim. Oh, sorry. Urbaid ibn Abd al Hay said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came to them with signs on him that he had taken a bath. So he came to the Sahaba عنهم, and it looked as though the Prophet وسلم, took a bath, right? We all know what that means, it means you know, your hair might look wet, etc. So he was cheerful, the Prophet وسلم, was cheerful. And we thought that he had been with his wives. We said, Messenger of Allah, we see that you are cheerful. He said, yes, and praise be to Allah. Later, wealth was mentioned, and the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, There is no harm in wealth for someone who has taqwa, but health for the person who has taqwa is even better than wealth. Cheerfulness is a blessing. So, the Prophet, وسلم, first of all, we see that it seemed as though he came from taking a bath, which goes to show us when the Sahaba عنه, thought, you know, they assumed he came from being with his wives. It goes to show us that the Prophet ﷺ teaches us being with your family should make you be in a cheerful mood. You should be happy. And the Prophet ﷺ seemed to be in a cheerful mood. Right? He didn't leave his home. Oh man, I can't stand this. You know, this lady. Right? It's how some people leave the house. I can't stand this lady. I can't stand that man. Right? How many times people will barge out of their house and they say these things? The Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba ﷺ, saw him and they said, oh, he, was, he looked cheerful. He looked happy. And so he just came and obviously what's meant is that he was just with his family so he was happy and he says there's no harm in wealth for someone who has taqwa so seek your wealth you have taqwa seek your wealth why because you're going to use it in rightful you know righteous ways but he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam health for the person who has wealth uh, sorry health for the person who has taqwa is even better than wealth 
And cheerfulness is a blessing. Really, cheerfulness is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see our children being happy and sometimes we wonder how are they so happy? What is it that makes them so happy? And really a lot of the time it's because they're living in the moment that they're in. What makes us sad and depressed and have anxiety attacks? It's because we're living in the future. Our minds are thinking of the future. I'm thinking of the bills I need to pay. I'm thinking of the things I have to do. I'm thinking of the rent I need to take care of. I'm thinking of you know, how I need to go buy groceries. I'm thinking of the meeting I have tomorrow on the weekend that I don't want to go to. So we're thinking of all these things that are not even a reality yet. We might not even live till then. And that's what makes us different than children. Because we are too busy thinking and our children are too busy enjoying themselves right now, right? Chill out, right? He's got a big smile on his face. Right? He's enjoying himself in the situation that he's in right now. That's what matters. Um, in the next hadith, 